Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. The memory process consists of three steps, encoding, storage, and retrieval. We've represented memory encoding with this laptop running a code full of synthesized info because encoding requires synthesizing outside information, like the words spoken to you or the data in a graph. Once information is synthesized, it moves to memory storage. Storage involves retaining encoded information in your mind, much like this elephant storing a book on these shelves that retain tons of information. Memory storage can be long-term or last for less than a second, but more on that another time. Finally, stored memories are accessed and recalled by memory retrieval, which we've represented with this exam room, because studious elephants always recall information with ease come exam time. Now, back to step one. There are two major ways that memories can be encoded, automatic processing and controlled processing. Let's take a closer look. This dude kicking back while that laptop automatically runs its code represents automatic processing. Automatic processing occurs when you encode memories without trying. For example, there's a good chance you remember what you ate for dinner last night, even though you probably didn't try to memorize this information. That's automatic processing at work. On the other hand, controlled processing is when you intentionally commit information to memory. This very controlled Ellie is showing off their controlled processing skills as they cram to memorize the different types of encoding strategies with those flashcards.